All right, so now we have David Moon from the University of Michigan. He's going to show us Tyler, a mechanism for text editing, which combines both the affordances of traditional linear editing and a structure editing. Today, I'm going to tell you about my ongoing work with my advisor, Cyrus Omar, on restructuring structure editing. Today, we write our programs using fancy text editors. Here's how they work at a high level. The programmer edits text, which is then parsed into an abstract syntax tree, or language term, as I call them here. The editor runs analyses on this language term, then propagates the results back to the text in the form of decorations like syntax highlighting or the red squiggles uh, so that we can see them. Uh, and here I have a double border around text to indicate that it's the editor state. A big advantage of this approach is the flexible linear editing affordances of text. A big disadvantage of this approach is uh, that the parsing step often fails. And if the parsing step fails, all the downstream steps are liable to fail, causing gaps in the availability and effectiveness of our language-aware tooling. Structure editors, also known as projectional editors, have long promised to improve this situation. In a structure editor, the programmer directly edits the term structure, ensuring that every edit state is a well-formed term. Uh, it may have holes for missing parts, uh, but otherwise it's well-formed, and so language-aware tooling can be consistently available. The editor then projects the term into some form to be viewed by the programmer. Uh, and this projection might be drag and droppable blocks like in Scratch or a more text-like interface like in JetBrains MPS. Whatever the projection, structure editors have the reputation of being too slow or difficult to use, and they haven't really taken off beyond the novice level. The editing experience can be highly viscous compared to text. In other words, it can be difficult to make changes to existing code. Let me give you a brief taste of this experience in MPS. So uh, JetBrains MPS is the state of the art in expert level uh, efficient structure editing and even professional programmers, some professional programmers use it on a daily basis. Uh, it features this text-like interface. Um, I can type left to right to construct operator sequences. Uh, and I can even enter parentheses one at a time. Uh, but because this is a structure editor uh, with a term-based edit state, I can only select complete terms. So notice as I try to select those characters I just inserted that I can't actually make a selection encompassing times 2 plus 3. And even 2 plus 3 is not selectable here because uh, it uh, cuts across the parsed associative structure since this plus is the, the root of the entire tree. So here's the choice today. We can either use text editors and deal with brittle tooling, or we can use structure editors and deal with viscous editing. Now, I don't believe this viscosity is fundamental to structure editing, per se, but rather the term-based architecture. So let me revise my terminology here and refer to prior art as term-based editors. And I'd like to propose a new option in this, in this space called tile-based editing, uh, which attempts to get the most the best of text editing and term-based editing. In a tile-based editor, we return to the indirect editing model of text editors. Uh, rather than editing the term structure, the programmer edits a more relaxed structure made of these things called tiles, uh, which makes it easier to edit. Uh, but unlike text, we can make sure that these tiles are sufficiently well-structured so that we can always parse them into the term structure as needed. Here's a tiny tile-based editor I built called Tyler. Let me start by saying that Tyler is a totally impractical authoring tool. You can only construct single character number literals and variables. Uh, you can only construct a single line expression in a tiny language with no types or evaluation. Uh, the point of Tyler is to illustrate the core ideas of tile-based editing. I'll soon say more about all the shapes that you're seeing here. Uh, for now, I want to emphasize that uniquely among structure editors, Tyler lets you make arbitrary range selections up to token boundaries. So for example, I can move over here. I can select this plus E, which does not correspond to a complete term. I could pick it up. I can bring it over. I can put it down. And all the while, Tyler will make sure that we uh, can always return to a well-formed term structure. So let's take a look at how Tyler makes this possible. So we've observed that there is a tension between supporting flexible editing and maintaining term structure. Uh, Tile-based editing navigates this tension 
by allowing disassembly of hierarchical structures into the linear components so that uh, we can manipulate them linearly. And meanwhile, it provides editing assistance along the way to uh, ensure proper reassembly. And there are two levels at which we allow this disassembly and ensure reassembly. The first is disassembling terms into tiles. Uh, so by default, Tyler shows the uh, shows us the uh, parse term structure of our program. So notice as I pan around um, in, within Tyler that every shape that we see has this convex hexagonal outline. I can turn on tile view in Tyler to show that these terms disassemble into sequences of tiles. So here, this, uh, this term a comma r is now going to become a sequence of these three tiles, a comma and r. Um, and we'll notice that if we go to a slightly more complex example, uh, we see that this previously tree structured form is now flattened into this sequence. Uh, and furthermore, you'll notice that the uh, every tile that you observe here has um, distinct shapes from the, the the strictly convex terms. They can be uh, con uh, concave as well, um, and so each tile is determined by uh, its pair of left and right tips, each of which may be convex or concave. And the different combinations of these left and right tips give rise to the different element shapes in an operator sequence. Operands, uh, prefix and postfix unary operators, and infix binary operators. Now, editing this tile structure rather than the term structure makes linear construction of operator sequences super simple, and this is, which is actually a, a, a rather non-trivial feature to implement in traditional term-based editors. But as we uh, insert our tiles, we need to make sure that our constructed tiles fit together in certain ways. Uh, notice how every pair of neighboring tiles fits uh, its neighbors. That is, a convex tip on one tile is, is expected to meet a concave tip in its neighbor. And it turns out that a tile sequence having this overall convex shape and uh, all of its neighboring tiles fitting together in this way uh, is equivalent to parsability into the term structure. So Tyler makes sure that these uh, geometric properties are satisfied as we edit. Uh, and this involves inserting and removing these special tiles called holes. So for example, uh, I'm going to extend this pi expression here uh, with times two, times two. Now notice as I inserted that times tile, uh, that Tyler automatically inserted this hole uh, to keep the convex shape. And then when I typed two, uh, this essentially fills that hole we just inserted. Now there are two kinds of holes. Um, there are operand holes, like the one that we just observed, and there are also operator holes. So if I were to now delete this times, we'd uh, have an operator hole to make sure that the things on either side fit together. Um, and let me break down how hole insertion and removal in that edit sequence uh, to insert that times two. Um, let's let's look a little bit more at the the underlying details. So here was my original pi expression. I then typed times to insert uh, the times binary operator, and this is just simple insertion into this linear sequence of tiles. Tyler then notices that the overall shape is no longer convex. So it inserts this operand hole to restore convexity, and this gives us a successful parse. Now here's the next edit I made, where I typed two to fill this hole. Um, so once again, I type two, and again, I simply insert into this linear sequence the two tile. Now my overall shape is convex, but now we have a pair of tiles that no longer fit together. So and Tyler notices this conflict and also notices that one of the one of the conflicting tiles is a whole, so it just simply removes it, and once again we return to a successful parse. Notice how this combination of linear insertion and hole removal recreates the usual hole filling experience in traditional term-based editors. Okay, so we've talked a bit about construction of tiles. Let's now turn our attention to selecting and restructuring of existing code.
uh, tiles already give us more flexibility here. For example, we observed how I could select this plus E, pick it up and move it over. Um, here's another example. So let's say um, that I wanted to internalize this let binding that I see here into this parenthesis, parentheses because I'm not using A anywhere outside of it. Uh, so one way I could do this is I could uh, simply select this whole thing. I'm going to pick it up. Uh, and now, uh, and then I can move it over and I can put it down. And I've completed my refactor. So that's cool. Uh, but let me undo that for a sec. And let's think about how we might have done that in a text editor. Um, in a text editor, uh, a different way I might have done that is I might have deleted this left parentheses, then moved over to the start of this let tile, and then uh, retyped the parentheses there. Um, Tyler supports a similar workflow where I can select that uh, left parentheses, pick it up, move it over, and reinsert it in front of the uh, let. Now, Tyler supports a similar workflow by which I can select, uh, oops. So what we're seeing here is that Tyler supports not only disassembly from terms to tiles, but also tiles uh, into these smaller components called shards. And along the way, uh, in this editing mode that we just entered, which is called restructuring mode, uh, we can make sure that we only, Tyler makes sure that we put down the tiles and shards we've picked up in reasonable positions. So let me review those edits I just performed and re-explain what's happening with some new terminology. So the first selection I picked up uh, consisted of a complete tile. And whenever a selection consists of complete tiles, we call the selection intact. Picking up, a selection then enters restructuring mode. And this region above the line is, uh, is called the backpack. And furthermore, if the selection I picked up is intact, then we can say that our, back, our backpack is balanced. And whenever our backpack is balanced, I can move freely in and out of tiles, uh, since putting down this intact selection doesn't threaten any of the existing tile structure. Sometimes, though, our selection does not consist of complete tiles. And in this case, Tyler disassembled the parentheses tile uh, into a pair of shards. And when a selection has a shard in it, we say that it's correct. Uh, and then if we pick up an individual cracked selection into the backpack, we now say that the backpack is imbalanced. And when the backpack is imbalanced, Tyler restricts our movement to positions within the current tile sequence. So we noticed how when I had picked up this parentheses here, I skipped over all these cursor positions in the middle because if I would have dropped this, paren this parentheses shard anywhere there, then uh, this would violate the proper nesting structure of matching shards. Uh, and so we are prevented from doing so. Now notice how also, Notice how when I uh, picked up this uh, left parentheses, the matching right parentheses is also highlighted. And this is to indicate that we can also pick up that matching parentheses. So as a different example, uh, let's go over to these parentheses here. I'm going to pick up this left parentheses. I have an imbalanced backpack, so I cannot escape this current tile sequence. But what I can do is I can go over here, I can pick up the uh, other uh, matching shard. Now I have a balanced backpack again. Uh, and so now I can move freely. And I can say put this down over here. Okay, so to recap, we saw how Tyler navigates the tension between flexible linear editing and maintaining hierarchical structure by allowing disassembly and ensuring proper reassembly. This happens at two levels. We can disassemble terms into tiles, edit those tiles, and Tyler will insert and remove holes along the way to maintain uh, these sort of geometric notions of fit, and this which uh, guarantees parsability. Uh, we can then further disassemble tiles into shards when selecting uh, and linear, linearly rearrange those tiles and shards we've selected uh, and meanwhile, restructuring mode will ensure that we can that we always put down those tiles and shards in reasonable positions. 
Uh, we think this approach gets the best of both worlds of text editing and term-based editing. Uh, finally, I'd like to touch on some of our ongoing work to evaluate and scale tile-based editing. We ran a pilot study of an early prototype of restructuring mode in July 2019, which suggested users easily took to the workflow but were confused by its ad hoc limitations. And now with a more general and principled design, we'd like to run a controlled user study uh, comparing the efficiency and user sentiment between tile-based and text editor users. Uh, as part of that effort, we are scaling up tile-based editing to Hazel, a live functional programming environment with the usual multi-line editor. And this involves some additional design and engineering challenges, such as integrating with a pretty printer, uh, integrating with Hazel's type system, and more. Uh, and finally, Tyler has a tiny bespoke grammar, but we think the idea is immediately generalized to the class of visibly pushed down grammars. So it'd be nice if we could automatically generate tile-based editors from a given visibly pushed down grammar. Uh, and further down the line, we're interested in extending these ideas to support uh, more general context-free grammars. So that was my talk on restructuring structure editing. You can play with Tyler today at tyler.fun. Uh, and you can read our accompanying web essay on tile-based editing at tyler.fun essay, which provides some extra details I didn't have time to cover here. Uh, I will say that uh, it is currently a work in progress and uses some outdated terminology regarding the backpacks, but otherwise the, uh, the ideas remain the same. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Thank you, David. We'll take just one question. Looks like uh, I see Jonathan's hand up. So this is great. This is, uh, this is the freshest thing I've seen in ages in structure editing. Um, really cool. Um, I wanted to ask a loaded question, though, about user studies. You did mention on your final slide that you plan to do some user studies, controlled user studies. How do you do a user study on something so different? Mm. Yeah, so I mean, well, uh, so I think there, there are a couple aspects of that. One is you want, like we want, we're interested in looking at just general editing efficiency. Um, so I think, for example, the restructuring, as the, the aspects of restructuring mode where you can skip over entire tiles, I, I could see that uh, leading to improvements in efficient editing efficiency. The other aspect is just general users, gathering user sentiment. Um, so um, you can, uh, give similar tasks both within text and uh, structure editing contexts uh, and gather post-task post -task, uh, responses in terms of how they feel about the general accuracy and speed and predictability of these editing operations. Uh, we've seen some controlled user studies of MPS that uh, indicate that experts, novices, they can have trouble with basic operations like deletion and selection. And so we'd be interested in seeing how we can improve, uh, improve upon that state of affairs. All right, thank, let's uh, thank David once again.